Hey YouTube, it's Marita and welcome to another edition of Nurse Lounge. In this edition, we're actually going to talk about preparing for nursing school exams. This was a question on TikTok and so I thought I would go ahead and bring that question or at least that answer to video over here regarding how to really go about taking your exams and are you preparing for your exams the correct way. This video may be a bit long, so I want you to be mindful of that, take notes and things like that. So if this is something that you're interested in, which most of you should be, stay tuned. My name is Dr. Marita P. I'm a registered nurse, nurse for 17 years. Um, OBGYN, Well Baby Nursery is my specialty. I am a nurse educator and I am doctorally prepared. And today's topic is preparing for nursing school exams. This is my advice on it. This is not research based. This is my advice on it. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that out there. I'm not, I didn't go back and research this. This is what I know because I teach it. Um, based off of my experiences when I was in nursing school, plus that I teach and I know what I focus on when I'm and when I am teaching and I know what my students are lacking when it comes to preparing for exams and how they're preparing. So before we start with that, again, this may be a long video. Be mindful of that. First and foremost, I want to say, I want to preface this by saying that many of you are gauging your nursing school success off of how you did in your general education classes. And that is a bad comparison. That's like comparing apples to oranges. Um, yes, it's education, but it's two different types of education, just like an apple and an orange is two different kinds of fruit, okay? So with that being said, your general education classes are preparing you to be more well-rounded. It does not prepare you to be a nurse or an engineer or a psychologist or a dentist or a veterinary or anything like that. General education classes are just that. Our general core classes are just that. They have preparatory foundational courses. So if you are making A's and B's in those classes and you're wondering why am I struggling in nursing school? Well, because one has nothing to do with directly with the other. Now, of course, your foundational courses such as A&P, one and two, micro, uh, biology, pathophysiology, even psychology even will help you with those things. They're foundational courses, but and true enough, if you don't know those classes, you will not be as successful in nursing school. But with that aside, take all that away. Those classes are made just to be foundational courses to make you more well-rounded, to make you better prepared for the program. Nursing school in itself or any other kind of professional program is just that, a professional program. They are giving you the foundation of how to enter yourself in that profession, in this case, nursing. Now, nursing school will not teach you everything you need to know about being a nurse. There's no way to teach you everything about nursing in two years or less. That is just not even possible. That's why they want you to be lifelong learners when it comes to being a nurse. You continue to learn. And as you know, that healthcare is ever changing and things are changing from the time that I went to school back in 2004. And we are now in 2021 and it will change even by next month. Okay. If not by tomorrow, that is how healthcare is. With that being said, we want to know how is the best way to test for these exams? Let's start by again, getting out the way that. If you make B's and C's in nursing school, you are doing just fine. I'm not saying that that's the best you can do. If you can do better and make A's, that is great. But I do not want you to start comparing the fact that you made straight A's in um, art and music and history and English and math and statistics as if that equates to nursing school because that is not the same thing. We're preparing you to be nurse generalists, meaning that when you come out of school, you know a little bit about everything, basically. Kind of like that saying, the jack of all trades, the master of none. It is kind of like preparing you for that. You know a little bit about everything, um, but basically just enough to try to keep you licensed. And that's basically it. There is no way to know everything, first and foremost. Now, let's get into the actual video in terms of how do I actually prepare for these tests? Now, with that being said, how to prepare for your tests, I'm going to actually give you general steps there's no way to 
There's no way to give you specific steps because that would have to mean I know every instructor that is out there and how they teach. And I do not. I know how I teach. I know how various instructors teach because I've sat in on their classes. And of course, I've been to nursing school and I've been to three different programs. I've been to a BSN program in which I went to school in. I went to an MSN program and I went to a DMP program in which I have been taught by various instructors. And I've learned these methods over the years, not only in my own nursing school experience, but of course, now that I teach it, I know what I expect. And I don't teach the same way as the next fellow instructor. That is the art behind education um, and partially science too. Now, now that I've spent five minutes talking about all that, let's talk about the education or the exam component in itself. How do I take my exams? Why is it that I study for these exams? And I think I know the material. I've read and I've, I've read the material and I have um, did the study guide if they provide one. I have, you know, did everything that I know to do. I've really read the chapters and I get to the test and like what was on there? What, what is that? So first and foremost, I want to say that keep in mind that your test should be reflective of what the NCLEX is going to be like, first and foremost. There is no study guide for the NCLEX. You there is no exact study guide, meaning that there is not these are the kind of this is the kind of questions you're gonna get, or these are the these are the questions you're gonna get on the NCLEX. There is no such thing. You you do have NCLEX style books that kind of give you questions that you can answer and things like that to see if you kind of know the content in general. But the specific questions on the NCLEX, nobody knows until you get there. And just so you all know that if you all are going to start school even now and you graduate in the year 2023 or you will sit for your boards in 2023, you all will be taking the new NCLEX called the next gen NCLEX, next generation NCLEX. That is supposed to be one of the hardest NCLEX that are out there because they're going to have a lot of drop down boxes, select all that apply, hot spot questions and things like that. Alternative format kind of questions, not just your plain multiple choice questions. They will have those, but they will incorporate some of the other alternative style questions in it as well. You need to be prepared for that and your faculty need to be or your instructors need to be preparing you for those kinds of questions. So therefore, them just giving you questions like what is COPD or what are the parameters for iron and what is H&H &H and what does it test for? No, that's not what nursing school is about. You sh that's foundation. You should already know that. When we test students, or at least when I test students or our program specifically test students or all the programs I've been to and worked in test students, we're testing you at the application level and above. Um, you should rarely get questions that are comprehension or knowledge-based questions. So you're like, what does that even mean? So there's this thing called Bloom's Taxonomy. And when it comes to Bloom's Taxonomy, taxonomy they have different levels of questioning. So you have knowledge questions like, what is COPD? That's a knowledge question. Um, comprehension questions, which are above that, would be, okay, so someone with COPD exhibits these signs and symptoms that is knowledge uh comprehension it means you've read about it you know what it what kinds of disease processes signs and symptoms are that is those two basic level of questioning we want you at application level and above so first understand that there's knowledge what is the definition of there's comprehension um, what are the signs and symptoms so i know what it is now what does it look like we want you to know once you get to the application level questions what is it about this disease process? How does it present itself in a scenario? So if you have a 55 year old man who is sitting there on a chair, who is, um, I can't think of the term they use for, is it barrel chested? I can't think of the term right this minute, but anyway, um, that is doing this, that, and the other, and he exhibits this, that, and the other. What is your first priority as a nurse to do in this situation? That is application. So when you get these, what is the first priority type thing to do? That is application kind of question. That means not only do you have to know what COPD is, not only do you have to know how the signs and symptoms are, but you need to know what the mechanisms are on the body. This is where the AMP comes in at, and this is where pathophysiology comes in at, because you have to know what do the lungs do. You have to know the whole component of what happens to them. You have to know, okay, does this really happen to people who are older, or can this happen to people who are younger? You have to know all that foundational stuff before you even answer the question. So Application is where we test that. You have to know how to apply it to a scenario. Do not go into your test, at least all of them, thinking that all you're gonna have to do is regurgitate facts. And I will say this, if you have a, a program that that's the only kind of questions they give, they only give you knowledge or comprehension questions, you are not gonna pass the NCLEX. You're not gonna pass. 
because they are not testing you at the level in which you're going to be tested when you take that NCLEX. That is important to know. You are not in a good program if that is the only kind of question that they give. If they give you some of those kind of questions, well, there's nothing wrong nothing with that. wrong with that, especially if you're like a first semester nursing student. There's nothing wrong with that at all because that's sometimes how we introduce those those kind of questions or get you acclimated to nursing school. At our program, however, we throw you into those those NCLEX kind of questions day one. That's our program. But there is nothing wrong with those kind of questions. I'm just saying if all your tests are comprised of knowledge based questions or comprehension kind of questions, that is a negative. That is not good because you will not be prepared for NCLEX. All right, with that being said, we want you to be an application style or level questioning, meaning how do I care for a patient with this disease process? That's what I wanna know. Now, with that being said, and you already know that, now it's time to actually think about your actual nursing instructor and who she, he or she is and how they ask questions. Your first test in nursing school, you may bomb it. I actually tell students, okay, you may fail the first test. You may fail the first couple of tests. You have to learn how nursing school questions or how nursing exams actually are given. They are not given like your general ed classes are because your general education classes typically are regurgitating facts. History, what, what can that be? Regurgitating facts. What ward happened at what year? Regurgitating facts. When it comes to English or literature, how to write something. Those are those, are those kind of classes, but in nursing school, it's not like that. So I want you to pay attention to your instructor and how he or she teaches. When they're going over their lecture notes or their lectures in class, are you taking notes for one? Number two, if you're taking notes, what are you taking notes on? If he or she repeats something two or three times, that is important for you to know and I will actually study that material if it's, if it's important for you to, if they mention it two or three times. If you think about your textbook and you have like those little boxes that say, you know, figure one, figure two, table one, uh, table two, nursing considerations, read those boxes. A lot of times they have cultural considerations in there. A lot of times they have nursing considerations in there, which you should do as a nurse interventions. That's what we need to know as a nurse. What would you do in this situation? Read those boxes. You need to know parameters. You need to know parameters just because you need to know fun fundamentally how to care for the patient. When should I be alarmed if their potassium level is an issue? So if they have a potassium level of whatever this number is and it says they have heart palpitations, is that normal for somebody with a potassium level of that, that threshold, that parameter? You would need to know that already. So learn those things. Once you learn those boxes and once you learn how your instructor asks questions or what they focus on, okay, go study the material. Number two or three, I don't even know where I'm on, doesn't matter. When you are reading your textbook, are you reading the book just to say, I read the book, I read the book, I read the chapter. Are you actually doing that? Or are you reading it for comprehension? Are you reading it for understanding? Can you explain what you just read to somebody else and explain how it works in your own words? Because if you can do that, then you pretty much know the material. If you just simply said, I read the chapters, but you can't have no idea how to explain it because you can't remember it, you have reading comprehension problems, you are not gonna be successful. Read the material for them to tell, for you to be able to tell somebody else what this subject matter is about. Be able to explain it in your own words. Take your own notes, rewrite your own notes so that you can better understand about how to explain it to someone else. If you can do that, you are more likely to be successful on your exams. Also, if they tell you to read chapters one through 10 for this test, you read chapters one through 10 for that test. Because guess what? If they told you to read chapters one through 10, but they only had chapters, let's just say one through five is all they really talked about, but they told you to read chapters one through 10, you are responsible for one through 10 and they can ask you any question they want to, even if they did not go over the material in class. Most of your classes are only two to four hours long, depending on how, how long your classes are. Um, if they're only two to four hours long, sometimes you can't, if they're four hours long, that means you're gonna have more chapters to read. There's no way to get through every single concept in every single chapter in that time period. So that leaves a lot of it for you to read and you to go back. And if you don't understand it, then you come in with questions. Also, are you reading your stuff before class, before lecture? Because that's how it should be assigned. If they come in and says for class on tomorrow, you should have read chapters one through five by tomorrow. So when you come into class, you're supposed to have already read that, not hearing it for the first time when you are in class. That's a problem because the whole point of lecture is for you to have already read the material. And then when you come to class, you're coming to class to get further knowledge or get further explanations of, about stuff that you already read. So you could ask questions. That is what it's really supposed to be. Not where you hear it for the first time, and then go back and read it after the fact. 
Well, I know you're going to say, well, it's too many chapters to read. Well, do you want to be a nurse or do you not want to be a nurse? It's just that simple. I know it's a lot of chapters to read, but again, you are wanting to be a nurse. You're wanting to take care of people. If you're not wanting to take care of people, then why are you even here? It is a lot to read, but I would want my person that you're, told, you're supposed to be taking care of to know that you actually did what you're supposed to be doing to take care of my family member. Because I'm telling you, if you don't, you're going to kill somebody or you're going to make them worse than what they were. That's not a good thing at all. So with that being said, read prior to class, not after the fact. Come in with your questions already. When they go over the material that's in the book, highlight what they say. If they emphasize something, put a star, circle it, whatever you're going to do so that you know to go back to that material. Ask your questions if you have questions. And after you do that, make sure, like I said, that you have went and um, read it for understanding, for knowledge, to be able to regurgitate that to somebody else, to be able to explain it to somebody else. Explain it in your own words. If you can explain it in your own words, then you're more likely to be successful on your exams. Now, again, they will test you on things that they did not go over in class. Be prepared for that. But if it was in the chapters they told you to read, it is fair game. So you can't come up, well, you didn't go over that. They don't have to go over it. it if it was in the assigned readings that you had to do, you are responsible for all of it. So you cannot complain about that. Now, with all that being said, we talked about that. We talked about the fact that you need to do comprehension time questions and things like that, and or not comprehension kind of questions. You need to know how to answer those kind of questions. Let's talk about the exam and what it's really trying to do. So the exam is trying to mimic NCLEX. It should be anyway. And NCLEX is wanting to know how you think, not what you know. So it doesn't care about if you know what the parameters are for a hematocrit. If you know what the parameters are for hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia, it doesn't care about that. You should already know that fundamentally anyway. What it wants to know is how are you going to take care of this diabetic patient who happens to have hyperglycemia and they present like this. What are your first nursing actions going to be when it comes to this situation right here? What is your first nursing action going to be? Or what are, what are the things that you're going to do? Select all that apply. I'm going to do this. 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 You know, we always say, okay, well, there's more than one right answer. What is the most right? What is your priority nursing intervention? What are you going to do first? That's what I want to know. And depending on the situation, it's not going to be to call the doctor. Depending on the situation, it's not going to be called the doctor. I want you to know that. Not every situation means you're going to call the doctor first because guess what? The doctor is not there but like five minutes during the day. What are you going to do to take care of your patient until you can call the doctor? What is going to be the first thing you're going to do to take care of your patient? What are you going to do first to save their patient's life? Remember, A, B, C, airway, breathing, circulation is the first things we go to. After that, we go into safety and things like that. Be mindful of those types of things. Also, with all that being said, we're preparing you for NCLEX. There is no study guide for the NCLEX, but you can learn how to answer the questions. Again, it's not about what you know. It is how you think. So with that being said, I have my own NCLEX book right here. I want you all, if you are serious about serious about learning how to answer questions, you should be doing these kind of NCLEX style questions every single night while you're in nursing school, not just when you get ready to take the NCLEX. You should be, if you're first semester, if you're first semester nursing student, as an example, you should already be doing NCLEX style questions every single night, every night. By the time you finish nursing school, you should have went through about three or four of these kind of books right here. You can get these books. This is Lippincott, but you can get Saunders. You can get all kinds of books. Kaplan. You can get these books from um, Amazon for one. And you get these books and it basically talks about the NCLEX in here. It has questions in here. It has the rationale in here. And what I would like for you to do is go through these. Every time your, your instructor is talking about something or whatever it happens to be, you read the material in the book. After you read the material in the book, you take your notes. You take your notes, you go to class and take more notes. After you take your more notes, you ask your questions. And every day that based on the content in which he or she taught, you come in this book right here, a, a book, a NCLEX book, and you um, answer about 50 questions a night. And if you can't do 50 because that's too many because maybe you have a test tomorrow, okay, do 10 questions a night. But my point is do questions every single night. Be diligent about answering the questions. 
Once you answer these questions, then you go to the rationale and you read the rationale as to why you got the question right or wrong. Even if you get it right, read why you got the question right. If you got it wrong, read why you got the question wrong. And you keep on answering these questions and you will find yourself getting better and better and better about how to answer these questions. They want to know how you think, not what you know. So when you come into those tests, you're kind of like, okay, I don't understand. None of those questions on that test, I didn't even understand. Did you understand the concept though? Did you understand the concept of whatever it happened to be? That's what you need to know how to do. Do these questions every night. If you happen to be going to LPN school, do get the one that says NCLEX um, PN on it. I think it's practical nurse on it, PN on it. If you're going to be an RN, of course, get the RN book on it. Do these questions every single night and I guarantee you will do better on your exams. Not only that, you're also preparing yourself at the same time for when you take your NCLEX at the end of your program. So be mindful. Yes, I am telling you, if you want to be successful in nursing school and on the name on, on the NCLEX, start doing that. Now, if you've already already in your nursing program and you're wondering how can I get my grades to go up and you have not been doing this, try this. Try taking doing this. Get you a book from Amazon or wherever and answer questions every single night. If you are on a break right now, so let's say you're on a summer break right now and you're not in school. Go ahead and get the book and you start going back over the classes that you just did this past semester. So if you just did med surge, go in here, go to the med surge section and go answer those questions. Do that this whole summer and see how much better you are at answering questions by the time you start school back in August or September or whenever you start school. This right here will save you when it comes to preparing for the NCLEX. Now, when you are preparing for nursing exams as well as the NCLEX, my job as a nurse educator or our jobs as nurse educators is not to spoon feed you what's going to be in the NCLEX because guess what? We don't even know what's going to be in the NCLEX. We don't, they don't give us questions. They don't say, here's what the NCLEX looks like, test like this. They don't do that. We don't have, we don't have, they give us sample questions. I have seen what the new NCLEX in 2023 is going to look like and many of you will be taking that exam. And when I tell you that exam is a beast, it's a beast. So go ahead now and be pre preparing for the exam by doing this. You only want to take it or have to take it one time. Of course, if you need to take it more than once, take it more than once. Do you. But you need to make sure that you are really preparing yourself for not only your exams at school, but this actual, this big exam that you're going to take at the very end. And remember, I'm going to end this video with this. You are not taking your exams just to take the information and dump it. You don't learn it to dump it. You are learning it because you are not just taking a test. You're learning how to take care of people when they're at the sickest. You're learning how to keep people alive. You're learning how to bring people back down to the baseline. So if they had a blood sugar of 500 and we need to get them down to 300 because that was their baseline. Sometimes it's not to cure people. Sometimes it's to bring you back down to your baseline, which is where you were, 300. That's not good for a blood sugar, but it's better than 500. So be mindful of that. And how do we do that? We have to test you at the application level. Remember that. So to recap briefly, learn your instructor. Look at those little boxes, nursing consideration things in your book. Read ahead of time, come prepared to class to ask questions. And you know what, with this video, I'm only talking to my serious nurses students. If you're not serious, please disregard this video because this is not for you. I'm talking about the people who are really, really ready for nursing school and serious about being a nurse and they're gonna be the best nurse they can be because they here for the real reason of taking care of patients. The rest of you, you can go ahead and cut this video right on off. Um, late in the game, but go ahead and cut it off because I'm not talking to the ones who wants to skim by, the ones who want to cheat, those who want to whatever. Because let me tell you, if you cheat your way through, it will catch up with you with the NCLEX. It will. Because when you fail that, you can realize your whole two to four years was wasted. So I'm only talking to people who are serious about being nurses and they want to do it the correct way. And they're really serious about taking care of people and saving lives. The rest of y'all, y'all can go to watch another channel who, who, don't, who, who play those kind of games. So... With that being said, you want to make sure you read the stuff beforehand. If they tell you to read 10 chapters, read all 10 chapters. Come in with your questions ahead of time. Or I really didn't understand this concept. Could you explain that a little bit better? Or also, one thing I didn't mention, utilize your instructor's office hours or virtual hours or study sessions or what are they have if you don't understand something. An instructor does not know what you don't understand unless you ask questions. So when they say, are there any questions and nobody raises their hand, they keep moving. They just keep moving. With that being said, if you don't ask questions, that's nobody's fault but yours. So ask questions. If you're too embarrassed to ask questions, send an email. If you're too embarrassed, you know, to talk, you know, I guarantee if you have a question, somebody else probably has the same question. Um, but send an email and say, you know, I really don't understand something. Can I come by your office during your office hours for some extra help? 
And if they're a good instructor, they're going to say, sure, these are my hours, whatever, pick a time, come back. Make sure you, you utilize that because at the end of the day, I'm going to do another video on nursing student etiquette, which some of you all lack etiquette. But at the end of the day, if they see that you really, 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 you know, struggling, but you really trying to learn how to do things and you're really trying to learn the material and you may be on the cups of a, say you had a C, but you about to, you could have made a B and a tenth of a point or whatever, they may go ahead and give it to you because they know that you were, you were actually, you were actually trying to work hard for this class. They don't have to, of course, because you earn what you earn. But at the same time, I want to say that they will try to help you if you help yourself. So utilize those techniques. Make sure you get you a book, something like this. Doesn't have to be this one, but make sure you get you one, even if you're first semester nursing student. First semester, get you a book just like this and start doing questions every single night. If you do 10 questions a night, 15 questions a night, if you're off on a break, you need to do questions every night. I don't care if you're in school or not in school, do questions every night. This is your future you're talking about here. Now, okay, you have an exam tomorrow and you can't do questions tonight. Okay, that's fine. Double up tomorrow. Double up the next day, whatever you have to do. But because I'm being a realist, I know that there's sometimes that you just can't do it. If you're supposed to be doing 30 questions a night or whatever you're doing, okay, you can only do 10 that night, do 10 that night, but do questions that night. If you cannot get a book right now, if you cannot get an NCLEX book right now, start off doing your questions online. So there's no excuses for you either. Go to quizlet.com, go to rn.com, go to different places like that and take those um, online uh, quizzes or um, questions on the subject matter that it happens to be and see if you get those questions right and then read the rationale as to why they're right or wrong so you can do both you can just say okay you know what i got some free time why are you sitting there waiting in line to do something get on the, get on the internet and start answering some of those questions when you sit in there in traffic you know whatever get on the, you know oh no don't no no don't do any traffic never mind but when you're sitting somewhere where you have some idle time sit there and do some of those questions do a few of those questions just kind of like do that all the time or maybe, you know, I, I one good site that I actually liked for information is um, RN.com. I think it's her name is Sarah. Um, she is on YouTube, here on YouTube. And she gives really good information about different content. So also, if you need help understanding something better, maybe your instructor didn't explain it that well and you just don't get it. Go to YouTube and utilize and type in that subject matter and listen to some people on YouTube explain that same subject matter. I happen to use YouTube in a lot of my classes. Um because not that they explain it better per se, but it does provide an alternative um, way of learning it, except for sitting there and me lecturing the whole time. So I incorporate different things into my class when I'm teaching, such as YouTube videos or more interactive things to help them learn a concept than to sit there and just lecture. So, and we'd move around, uh, we move around a lot more into the kinesthetic learner. So the person who has to have their hands on stuff, we do stuff in my classroom, that's just us. But you know, I'm understanding of the different learning styles and that some of us have to hear it, see it, touch it. I'm a touchy kind of person myself, I gotta touch it. Um, so that's kind of what we do, or I do, that's what I do. But I want you to take this, you know, and say, okay, you know what? I want to be a better student. I want to be a better test taker. Because um, at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. How good of a test taker are you um, when it comes to the exam component? I'm not talking about clinical component because that's a whole different beast over there. The exam component. This is what you need to do to prepare for your exams. And I guarantee you, if you do everything I just said, if you do everything I just said, including contacting your instructor when you're having difficulty, Form study groups even with good stu students who are making good grades. If you are doing those things, you will have better grades. If you are skimping on some of those things or, you know, maybe you need to learn how to take better notes. Maybe you need to learn how to. So some things may be some things you need to work on, learn how to take better notes and things like that. But if you incorporate all those things to your to your learning, you will likely do more, more better. That's not correct. You will likely do better on your exams. So if you have any comments, concerns, or questions, definitely comment those below. I can do more videos for you on this content, but I just answered this question on TikTok. It was not this in depth, obviously. Um, but um, what I do want you to do is definitely take notes from this video so that you can be better prepared when you go in to take your nurse, your next nursing exam. I've had students come back and say, you know what, because of what you just told me, I actually got a B on my test instead of a D this time. Um, how bad do you want to be a nurse? How bad do you really want to be a nurse and do you want to be a good nurse? I'm only here to teach and help the good nurse, the ones who want to be good nurses to take care of their patients. They're here for the right reasons. I'm not here to help give you shortcuts. That's not me. I'm not here to uh, 
have you skimped by i'm not here to help you cheat i'm not here to help you do anything because you compromise the integrity not only of the program but of nursing as it's in itself and i'm not going to compromise the very profession in which i have grown to be who i am at this point in time as dr marita p so until the next time follow me on ig if you choose to TikTok too that's where i have questions that come from that i create these videos from and put your question below if you have a question uh, but until the next time you all keep on studying do your questions and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.